Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Hobo here today, and SmackDown Live is just going off the air. And good show this week. Um, let's get right into this thing. Uh, we start off with Daniel Bryan, Shane McMahon, and Randy Orton talking about what happened with Brock Lesnar last night on Raw. Shane was like, this is unacceptable. There's going to be repercussions. Uh, you can't just go around on Raw and do whatever you want to do. But it was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, Daniel Bryan, he was agreeing with him. Randy Orton says, you know, it only takes one RKO to drop Brock Lesnar. Uh, that was in response to Shane because Shane was like, you know, what what if Brock comes here to SmackDown? What, what are we going to do? <laughs> so Shane and Daniel Bryan hired all the security on the face of the planet to try to stop Brock Lesnar tonight uh, in case he were to show up, which is pretty much a telltale sign right there that Brock Lesnar is going to be here on SmackDown Live at some point. But we'll find out if he appears or not. Next up, The Miz interrupts Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon, and D-Bry makes a triple threat number one contendership match with Apollo Crews, the L L L L L Lucha Thing, Kalisto, and Baron Corbin. I'm never going to drop that, by the way. Kalisto, who should never have messed his promo up. He'll never get over it now. Or at least we won't. The IWC will never get over it. We're just all salty like that. You know how it is. If my chair would stop squeaking, that'd be A-OK, -okay, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> and then uh, Dean Ambrose interrupts Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan, talking about how he's going to be kicking off SmackDown in just a second. He said, this ain't no one-hit wonder, baby. Dean Ambrose is here to stay. I sure hope that that's true. Got my Dean Ambrose shirt on right now, as a matter of fact. And I would probably cry if he ends up losing to Jobber Ziggler. Who, uh, who, as we remember from last week's SmackDown Live review, I'm not even supposed to be saying his real name or any part of his real name. He's just Jobber. Let's continue. Uh, <laughs> so Dean's in the ring. He's talking. He brings the Jobber out. Uh, Dean cuts a mean heel promo. It was very heel-ish, at least. Um, I'm really interesting. Really interesting. I'm really interesting. I'm really interested <laughs> to see if Dean will go heel for this program and if he does it'll probably be amazing so Dean walks out lights go out Bray Wyatt in the ring uh, he lays out Dol Jobber <laughs> with the sister Abigail Bray says that if he beats Jobber he will take his place at the SummerSlam main event The crowd popped huge for Bray Wyatt saying this. So you would think that maybe they'd pull the trigger on Bray Wyatt. Because it makes sense. The crowd's behind him. They really want to see this guy uh, uh, do big things because he's been screwed over for pretty much his entire career. Uh, we've been over that. And the Battleground review actually was the first time I really brought it up. But... Uh, yeah, after that, we go to commercial, come back. Jobber's talking to Daniel Bryan and Shane. Uh, he says that he wants to fight Bray Wyatt, and he wants that match to happen. And Shane's like, all right, you got it. So it'll be Jobber versus Bray in the main event of SmackDown. And if Bray wins, he's the number one contender for the WWE Championship, or whatever they're calling it this week. Honestly... During Dean's promo, he said, I'm the WWE World Champion. Is it the WWE World Championship? The WWE Championship? The WWE World Heavyweight Championship? What is the name of this championship? I need to know. Because they don't even know. So how am I supposed to know? Whatever. So we get into our first match about 25 minutes into <laughs> SmackDown. It's the number one contendership intercontinental championship uh, triple threat match with Kalisto, Apollo Crews, and Baron Corbin. Apollo Crews gets the win. A pretty short triple threat match, you know, it was what it was though. Baron Corbin, he was doing his big guy, his the big guy stuff. Kalisto, I, I feel so bad for this man. L -l 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 Lucha thing, he's never, never, <laughs> never going to get over it. Nope, never, ever, 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 ever. But yeah, there was a scuffle at the end of the match. Uh, everybody starts fighting, Baron Corbin lays out pretty much everybody. 
except for Apollo Crews, who Miz laid out with the skull crushing finale, but Miz got laid out by Baron Corbin. So it all makes sense because Baron Corbin definitely won that match, so he needs to be put over strong. Oh, wait. No, he didn't. <laughs> what an idiot I am for thinking that. So next up, we get a Becky Lynch versus Eva Marie matchup, which never even happened because Eva jumped down off the rope after doing her stupid pose and she pretended to have a stupid injury to her stupid leg. She can't even sell it properly. She's standing around. She's just rubbing it. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. My leg hurts. The referee's like, oh, get the, the referee sold this injury better than Eva Marie did. And Eva Marie's the performer. The referee's just the referee. And the doctor and the referee, they're helping her out. She's just grabbing her leg. Oh, my leg hurts. My leg hurts. Becky Lynch is like, what the hell? The, the, this? I was a four horsewoman in NXT, and now this? This is what I'm subjugated to? I have to sit here and be a part of this trash? Oh. Oh, that's so, so awful. So awful. Makes me want to cry. And then we get an interview with Carmella and... What's her name? Wow. Can't even think of her. Renee Young. Renee Young. Carmella interviewed by Renee Young. Natalia interrupts. Wow, I can't believe that just happened. But Natalia interrupts. Uh, she's talking about how something, I don't remember. I, I, I watched all of SmackDown, don't remember this promo. There's probably a reason why I don't remember what was said. Probably because it wasn't very interesting. But, uh, yeah, they pretty much confirmed that they're going to have a match later on tonight. So that's something. American Alpha up next. Oh my god. So I'm pretty sure SmackDown earned five points just for American Alpha right here. And you'll see by the end score for SmackDown Live this week why that five points matters so much. No, but seriously though, we get back from commercial vaudevillains are in the ring. American Alpha comes out. Crowd pop monstrously. These guys are over like Grover, son. A good showing. Vaudevillain's got a surprising amount of offense in. They needed to, uh, even though they're going to be pretty much jobbed out for the rest of their careers. But, you know, whatever. Because you, you can't have everybody participate in squash matches all the time. Braun Strowman, Nia Jax, American Alpha, squash matches. Makes sense. No. But you just you can't do that. Another thing, this is kind of off topic here, but they're still working house shows with the Wyatt Family versus the New Day. Our brand split didn't happen, I guess. Uh, whatever, whatever. Those will probably end after SummerSlam, though, you would think, but... Alright. So, yeah, American Alpha picks up the win against the Vaude Villains with... Oh, what is the name of their finish? Grand Amplitude. God, I love that move. Jason Jordan throws Dude in the air. Chad Gable brings him down with a back suplex, turns it into a bridge. So awesome. I love American Alpha. I love these guys. I really do. Then we get the AJ Styles uh, message to John Cena. AJ Styles, he's like, uh, you know, cut the music. I'm going to get right to the point here and not waste your time. And then John Cena comes out. That was pretty much all he got to say before John Cena came out. Um, they, oh, I'm not even going to attempt to tell you guys what they said exactly. But all I can tell you right here is that it was one hell of a back and forth promo. AJ feels so comfortable now on the mic. John Cena's always found a home right there in the microphone. So, do whatever you can. I don't care if it involves punching a small child in the face. Track this promo down. It's so worth it. Go view it. Go listen to it. Do whatever you can. You need to see this. It was really good. If you watch SmackDown for only a few things this week, watch it for the American Alpha match and this. That's pretty much all I can recommend to you, really. Actually, no, there's one thing coming up that I will also recommend to you. But, hey, whatever. So, yeah, uh, one hell of a promo. One hell of a promo. I wrote that in my notes. Just thought I should point that out. <laughs> and then next up, we get uh, a commercial break. We come back. Security surrounding the ring. Fandango. Uh, Febreze is in the ring. I refuse to call them by their actual name, Brizango. A lot of people are becoming accustomed to the name Febreze. I don't even know who started saying Febreze either, but I like it. I really do. So yeah, Febreze in the ring. Uh, Randy Orton comes out. It's going to be Randy Orton versus Fandango. 
you know, it's just your typical Randy Orton match with a guy who he's not really akin to being in the ring with. Um, and they, they actually did. They played off of the highlight reel segment from Battleground because they said Fandango was angry at the comments Randy Orton made on the highlight reel. And Randy Orton was talking about to Chris Jericho that, uh, you know, at least I didn't lose to Fandango uh, in my f- or at WrestleMania or something along those lines. So pretty good continuity uh, right there. Wow. Did I, did I just say that about a WWE show? I say we got good continuity for the first time ever. No, seriously, though. Um, so security surrounds the ring. Crowd's starting to rumble a little bit. Orton's looking around. He spots Brock Lesnar uh, chilling right out there um, by ringside. There we go. That's what it's called, ringside. So he's chilling by ringside. Security's like, Brock, get out of here. Go, Brock. Don't do it, Brock. Don't hop the barricade, Brock. But Brock's like, you know what? I'll do what I want. So Randy Orton turns around. He drops Fandango with an RKO. And then Brock vaults over the barricade. I, he's, Brock Lesnar is deceptively quick. Dude hops over the barricade, gets in the ring, and drops Randy Orton with an F5. If you blinked, you would have missed it. They say that about Lucha Thing Kalisto, that if you blink, you'll miss him. But no, if you blink, you'll miss Brock Lesnar. Dude is quick. He is really deceptively quick. Brock Lesnar is incredible. But yeah, the RKO last night on Raw was a lot better. Because I don't think anybody had a thought in their mind that Randy Orton would come out of nowhere and just boom, RKO. But we knew there was a buildup all to this point that Randy Orton was going to be confronted by Brock Lesnar in some way. And you you knew it, that it was going to happen. It wasn't like, oh, is Brock Lesnar going to show up? Like, I think if they didn't mention it, maybe it would have been a little bit better, but they kind of OD'd it with all the security references and whatnot. But no, I liked it. I enjoyed it, but just not as much as the RKO from Raw. So we get a backstage segment. Heath Slater talking to Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan's like, look, we'll give you a match next week on SmackDown, and if you beat uh, this opponent that we have lined up for you, you can become a SmackDown superstar. So the match will be for a contract. And wham, I don't know where Rhino just gores Heath Slater out of picture. And it was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And Rhino comes back. He just smirks at Daniel Bryan, turns around, and walks away. I was like, well, 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 that happened. And Daniel Bryan was like, yeah, I think we're going to need a medic in my office. Because he was talking to somebody on the phone. Eh, that's funny. That's funny. I like Daniel Bryan. I really do. Uh, this is a really good role for him since he can't wrestle anymore. Feels really natural for Daniel Bryan to be in that GM spot. But yeah, next Carmilla and Natalia. Uh, d- it didn't happen. Carmilla was walking down to the ring, doing her best Enzo Amore impression. No, I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't don't kill me. I'm kidding. But uh, <laughs> Carmelo gets Carmelo Carmelo Anthony gets attacked by Natalia. And Natalia locks in the sharpshooter on Carmelo Anthony right there at the bottom of the ramp. I don't know. What? what? All right. <laughs> yeah, this was kind of... I think it would have been better if there was a match and not an attack, but I guess they're trying to build Natalia up. And also, this is a this is a little thing that I want to go back to with the American Alpha stuff. Uh, Darren, Darren Young? No, 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 no. David Otunga. David Otunga was saying how American Alpha is going to be a future tag team champions. Either him or JBL said it. But that doesn't make sense because the tag team championship, as of right now, is exclusive to Raw. So how are these guys from SmackDown going to get a shot at the Raw championship? And the same thing can be said about the women on SmackDown. What what championship do they have to fight for? Since these two titles don't... Uh, they're not allowed to go between brands, as of right now anyway. What are they even fighting for? They should do their best WCW Time Warner holdout thing impression and just sit at home and collect a paycheck because you don't got no title to fight for. So if, if, if the championship means that you're number one, how does one decide who is number one if there's no championship to decide who number one is? If you're not fighting to be the champion, go home. That is the number one thing that you want to be in this industry. 
is the champion. I don't care what championship it is. If you hold gold, your your value goes up. That's just that's straight fact. Don't care who you are. Even if you're Santino Morella, dude's stock went up when he won the Intercontinental Championship. Just throwing that out there. But, yeah, I went off on a rant. Whatever. So, finally, we get to our main event. Bray Wyatt versus Jobber. And if Bray Wyatt wins, he's the number one contender to Dean Ambrose's championship at SummerSlam. So, there kind of, or there came a point in the match where Bray Wyatt was trying to undo the turnbuckle in the corner. Didn't get the pad off. He got caught with a, a zigzag by Jobber and got a near fall. But Jobber later in the match takes off the turnbuckle cover and throws it. And then he headbutts the back of Bray Wyatt's head. Bray Wyatt hits the turnbuckle and Jobber hits him with the Shawn Michaels surprise. And dude has no original moves. Jobber did the stinger splash. He did flying forearms or something. He's trying to be Shawn Michaels, but he never will be Shawn Michaels because he is a jobber. You want to hear my jobber rant on, on Jobber? Well, go back and listen to SmackDown Live Review from last week. You will know exactly why this man deserves to be nowhere near the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Or the Intercontinental Championship. Even if he was on Raw, he wouldn't even need to be anywhere close to the Women's Championship. Nowhere near any championships for Jobber. So Jobber hits him with a super kick surprise uh, and pins him. Bray Wyatt has been so disrespected in his run in this company. I, you know, I... Back when the Wyatt family debuted in SummerSlam 2013, I think it was 2013 against Kane, and they had that Inferno or Ring of Fire match, whatever they called it, I legitimately thought these guys were going to be a force of nature, but the only the only thing they're good for is just nothing. I mean, Braun Strowman, he's going to get a push, but is he really even going to go anywhere? Do squash matches lead to big pushes now? I mean... This isn't 20 years ago. Is this really going to work with Braun Strowman? Um, Eric Rowan, he's he's kind of doing nothing. But, yeah, let's, let's get into that, actually. After the match, Eric Rowan attacks Jobber. And Ambrose tried to help out, helps out Jobber. <sighs> oh, man, I can't English. Whatever. But Ambrose tried to help out Jobber. Wow, I did it again. And that was an accident. All right, let's try this again. Ambrose tries to help out Jobber, and Eric Rowan leaves them both laying. Uh, Bray Wyatt gets up, drops Jobber with a sister Abigail, and that's how SmackDown went off the air. Six out of ten show. And if we backtrack, I said American Alpha gave the show five points. No, <laughs> I'm kidding, but... Yeah, I... I yeah, slightly above average show. Nothing really eye popping. Like, oh my god, I can't believe I just wa- uh, watched that. Actually, yeah, there's one thing, and that was the finish to the Bray Wyatt versus Jobber match. Oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. Because it shouldn't have happened. <laughs> so Jobber has to cheat. That's a great way to book your number one contender. As a cheater. What a sham. What a sham. All right, I gave this SmackDown a 6 out of 10. Not exactly what I was looking for this week. I expected a stronger show, but, you know, what can I get? You know, I'm, I'm just a fan. They don't care about the fans. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, yeah, I don't really care for SmackDown this week. But if you guys did or didn't, leave a comment. If you did or didn't, like it. Like this video. I can't even, I can't even do anything right right now. Whew, we're having a tough time closing this one out. Yeah, we are. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Uh, if you have anything that you want to uh, verbally fight me about in the comment section below, drop one there, and then we can have some verbal fisticuffs, and I can tell you why you're a stupid idiot, uh, and then you can tell me why I'm a stupid idiot, and then we'll just have a good laugh and a pint after, but... Yeah, also, if you have not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That's the number one way to help the channel. 
And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. See you later.